Jazz Choir. And I am Pat Theodore Logan. And together we are Wild Stallions! Being that the third Bill and Ted movie is finally upon us, I figured it'd be a good time to take a look back at the forgotten failure that is the Bill and Ted TV show titled Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. Now, this is not to be confused with the animated Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, which had been airing just a year prior. This animated version of the show was originally produced by Hanna-Barbera, and featured the voice talents of Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, and George Carlin reprising their roles. Amigos, are you in need of assistance? Rufus! I was just checking out the latest album by New Boys on the Corner. And? They stink. But that's not why I'm here. Excellent! You have come to help us with our report on classical music! Gentlemen, that would be cheating. However, I do have clearance to say three words. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Amadeus? Did he not make a movie a while back? Yeah, my family rented that flick. It was most triumphant. While it failed to capture the exact same magic as its film predecessor, it was a fun aside made memorable if only for the fact that the voice actors were the same as in the film. But even that would soon change. In 1991, Fox decided to develop a live-action Bill & Ted sitcom. And to tie this sitcom into the animated series that was already airing, Fox took over production of the animated show and had Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, and George Carlin replaced with the new Bill and Ted actors from this live action show. Whoa! This guy Art definitely produced some awesome works. That must be why they named the museum after him. <laughs> <laughs> so there were two shows called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, each with the same cast set to air during the same season. And if this wasn't confusing enough, a film sequel titled Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey was also hitting theaters the same year. So 1991 had three, wait, technically four sets of Bill and Ted's. So? Fortunately, Nelson Entertainment, which produced the Bill and Ted movies, kept this new live-action sitcom off the air until Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey achieved a specific box office gross, at least allowing some breathing room between the projects. This newly revamped animated series, without the original voice actors, had even more trouble catching on, and was cancelled in November of 1991, before the live-action version had even hit the air, which was really a good sign for things to come. <laughs> <laughs> Including an unaired pilot, eight episodes of this live-action series were produced. The series follows the events of the first Bill & Ted film. I'm not sure how it's supposed to tie into the animated series, or Bogus Journey, if at all. The actors playing Bill & Ted are doing their best with what they have to work with, but while the film portrayals of these characters manage to be charming, philosophize with them. <clears throat> All we are is dust in the wind, dude. These versions of the characters just come off as mildly annoying. How's it going? I like your big hair. I like your big hair, too. You guys never give up, do you? We request the honor of your presence at Ampob's, home of the big 12-inch, after school. They have the most vivid pizza in all San Dimas. And a clogzilla machine. You want us to go out with you? Definitely. Is Ted Nugent going to be there? No. Shamefully, I admit, we don't really know him. We just really liked you and were trying to impress you because we didn't know how to be ourselves yet. Yeah. It feels more like an SNL parody of Bill and Ted than one that is supposed to mimic the films. Soon we'll have someone to walk with and someone to talk with. So so someone to go to the water slides with? Yeah. But... We must promise ourselves not to let our undying love for our respective but still imaginary babes ever interfere with our undying devotion to the wild stallions. No way. Each episode basically follows Bill and Ted on a different adventure. Although due to its low budget, each adventure was restricted to one time period per episode. Please, oh great one, we will be most willing vessels for which you can pour your copious amounts of babe wisdom into you. 
It would require so little from you. It means so much to us. It's not the worst idea, almost giving this show a Star Trek-like approach to storylines, but it's all executed very poorly. Like this episode, where they travel back to the 1930s, which for some reason is in black and white. And not just the episode is in black and white, but Bill and Ted see things in black and white also. Rats! Dude, look at you! Dude, look at you! We're totally pale! What happened? Bill, something tells me we're not in San Dimas anymore. Excuse me, bodacious black and white babe. Whoa! Did you tell us where we are? And then they bring a character back with them, but she stays in black and white? Come on. I can see your front side and your back side at the same time! And the front of my hand and the back of my hand! And the tops of my feet and the bottoms! I've never seen my front side and my back side at the same time! You're definitely missing out! Sometimes, they meet famous historical figures like in the film, such as this episode set in the 1950s, where they meet Elvis, which is probably one of the better of the episodes. You're the future of rock and roll, but only if you'll be totally persistent and unlock it from your inner self. It's buried inside you, Elvis, dude. Oh, Bill. Thank you, Ted, I try. It was evident that this series was running out of ideas fast, and there was only so much that they could realistically do on such a limited budget. Unlike the animated series, which could do new things with the characters, thanks to the limitlessness of animation, there just wasn't much to go off of here in this live-action version. If Fox really wanted both versions of this series to coexist at the same time, then they should have just had these live-action segments be the bookends to the animated series. That way, they could do much more with animated storylines while still incorporating some live-action elements. But fortunately, this live-action series was cancelled after seven episodes aired in 1992. No way! Bill, we are wretchedly out of tune! And even more fortunately, it turned out that it wouldn't be the last adventure for Bill and Ted. Excluding these forgotten television projects, there were never any attempts at a pointless film reboot or remake. I'm very excited that Bill and Ted Face the Music is finally here, if not solely because it reunites the original cast with the original screenwriters. This series is a series of films that has spanned over three decades, with the same creative vision and enthusiasm behind them. How many film series can you say that about? For that alone, I can't wait to watch the new film. It will make for a great palate cleanser after watching this show. I'm going to go rant now, actually, and I suggest you do the same. Happy Bill and Ted Day, dudes, and be excellent to each other. Excellent!